All right, so today we are gonna talk a little bit about batteries. How do you know which is the right one for your quad? And what do all these numbers mean on the battery? We've got uh, 1600, 120, uh, 4S1P, 14.8V, 23.68WH. What the heck? Lots of stuff going on in one of these batteries. Plus, why are there two wires here? Seems seems kind of odd, right? Some have two, some only have one, right? This one's only got one. Why? What's going on here? How do you know what's best for you? Let's dive into it. Okay, so first let's talk about batteries themselves. Now, most drones are powered by LiPos, a lithium polymer battery. You just get better energy, better bang for the buck out of a LiPo than you would with say, I don't know, a bunch of AA batteries strapped together. Uh, you're not gonna fly quad on AA batteries, though I've seen it done, Rotoride did a nice job there, but I digress, we're talking about LiPos. One of the places to start is with your quad, right? Look at your drone and take a peek at the connector. That's kind of the good place to start. This is a uh, five inch racing quad. We've got an XT60 connector here. That means my battery also needs to have an XT60 connector. Um, some of them look similar. This is an XT30, but if we look, they're not gonna match up much too small. This is for a smaller drone. But then when I get something like this, my whoop, this connector here is even different still. This one's too big. This is a pH 2.0 connector. Really, do you need to know the names of them? No, but it is helpful in making sure you get the right battery. So for step one, figure out what kind of connector does your drone have? Now you can change them. This is a tiny whoop. A lot of people change these. I don't want to get too deep into the connector itself, but it is a limiting factor. Basically, the bigger the connector, uh, the more metal it has inside of it, the better it's gonna do in conducting electricity and transferring electricity. So an XT60, it's gonna be better in general um, in transferring energy than an XT30. So is bigger better? Yeah, usually, if your quad is large enough to handle that extra weight. So let's talk about these numbers here. Now, the first number that you'll kind of look for is the largest one. This one's 1500, this one's 1600, I've got a 1300 and next to that you'll see M A capital A H that's milliamp hours. This one has 1600 milliamp hours. That's the capacity of the battery. You can think of milliamp hours or capacity as the gas tank. So the larger the number here, the more energy, the more gas, the more power, the more juice that your your battery is going to have. So larger numbers generally will mean more flight time. So why don't you just get the biggest battery possible? Well, you kind of thought of this already. It's gonna to be too big and heavy and weight, obviously not a friend of drones. So you kind of have to balance the capacity versus the size of your drone and the weight that it adds to it. For example, I got these two Ivonic batteries here. This is a 1600, this is a 1550, right? They're, they're only a couple of grams different. The 1600 is like five or seven grams heavier than the 1550. And on a five inch racing drone or freestyle drone, that's okay. I'll take the 50 milliamp hours of extra juice plus the uh, couple of extra grams. So, you know, that's capacity. And if we just look at size, we can see the 1600 here is bigger than the 1300. So obviously there's a little bit more juice inside the bigger battery. There's a lot of other numbers here. How about this one, 120C. Let's look at some of these other batteries. 100C, we've got a 50C. What is this C rating? Well, the C rating is the ability for it to flow out of the battery. So the higher the number, in this case, this 120 is the highest C rating. The, the juice inside of this battery, the gas is gonna be sucked out faster. Um, you're gonna be able to pull it from the battery quicker, right? That's basically what the C rating does. So, so if you want something that isn't going to drain the battery fast, you could go with something with a lower C rating like this one, 50 C, and it's just not gonna pull out of this battery faster. You also notice we've got a smaller connector here that also is gonna limit the uh, ability for uh, the battery to be drained quickly. So the C rating, you can think of as the flow coming out of the battery. Higher the number, the quicker the possible flow. Okay, so another number you're looking for, 4S, 6S, 2S, 3S. This one's a 4S, this one's a 4S, 1P, 4S. Uh, we've got, 
We've got a 3S here. This one here, will it see on there? One cell, one S. So you might have heard it there, but the S, that's the number of cells inside of the battery. So if you look at this one, uh, you can kind of see there are four cells inside of here. One, two, three, four. Four cells, four S cells wired up in series. That's what the S is for. So four S, four cells, three S, three cells, two S, you guessed it, two cells. So the cells, um, the number of cells uh, wired in series, that's basically equivalent to like horsepower, right? So the higher the number of cells in series, the more energy, the more power, the more voltage you get, the more horsepower, right? So, so that 4S directly corresponds to the voltage. So four cells at 3.7 volts per cell is what it, we have here, 14.8. That's basically the storage voltage. That's where you want your battery to be when you're not using it. 3.7, 3.8 volts per cell. Now when it's fully charged, you can charge that to 4.2 volts per cell or 16.8 in this case for a uh, four cell battery right so 4.2 volts per cell is is basically the top end now there are some batteries like this one here it says 4.35 volts per cell i can charge these to 4.35 and you probably can for these two i don't recommend it um, could damage your batteries if you overcharge them so this is 1600 milliamp hours you're going to charge it at 1.6 amps 1550, you're gonna charge it at 1.5. This one, this one here is 1300, 1 1.3. 1100, 1 1.1. 850, 0.8. Um, so basically you're gonna need a balanced charger and you're gonna figure out how to charge it. Basically you take the milliamp hours and you divide by a thousand. Now you're gonna need a smart charger where basically it'll, it should know how many cells you have. It, you, you can input the different kind of uh, battery chemistry, right? Make sure you got a lipo and then you charge your cells so they all end up at the same voltage per cell. Now you'll notice that there are two connectors on the battery, the yellow one, that's the XT60. And then you have the balance lead that makes sure all the cells charge the same rate to the same capacity. Now, if you look at a 1S, battery that you use for a tiny whoop you'll see there's only one lead well that's because there's only one cell it's a single cell battery so you don't have to worry about that there these lipo batteries they're they're full of energy which makes them potentially dangerous so you need to really make sure that you're taking care of these batteries don't run them lower than 3.2 volts per cell make sure that you turn on the osd in beta flight so you can kind of monitor where your batteries are at i'm going to show you how to do that Okay, so I've got my drone connected to beta flight. My propellers are, are off. My battery is not connected, that's important. I click that little connect button and I'm gonna go into this OSD, the on-screen display, because I want to see a couple of different things um, about my battery and my battery health while I'm flying, right? One, I suggest you turn on a timer. You're gonna kind of learn how long your batteries last and the timer is a good kind of visual gauge to kind of see that. But you can also add things like battery average cell voltage. I almost always turn that on so that I can see right here when my battery gets to a certain cell voltage, that's when I stop flying. I'm looking for an average cell voltage of 3.5. At 3.5, that's generally when I call it quits. Sometimes I'll go to 3.2, depends on how dangerous I like to feel like flying. Uh, but if you go to 3.2, generally it'll come back up to 3.5, or if you stop at 3.5, then you're pretty much gonna end up at storage voltage. So that's kind of up to you. But there are other things you can add. You can add battery current draw, so you can see how much current your battery is drawing. You can add the average uh, current drawn, that's kind of interesting as well. Uh, you can add the actual battery voltage, right? So if you have a 4S battery, you can see how, how much voltage you have going on there. We've got battery efficiency. We've got uh, battery usage in a graphical, like a, like a fuel tank. And there's lots of things there. And you can kind of go ahead and move those things around um, to kind of help you uh, see what's going on. And then as you fly, they're there in your goggles and you kind of decide when it's time to land. Definitely need to take care of these batteries if they start to smell, if they swell. Um, if you notice nicks in them, 
Don't use them. Take them to a place to have them recycled. Never throw a battery away in the garbage. That's going to cause a fire, and that's super dangerous, right? There are places like Best Buy where you can recycle these things for free. Absolutely do that. So if you're wondering what's a good battery, well, there are lots of good batteries out there. I've been a fan of these Vonix. They're, they're kind of good bang for your buck. You can get them off of Amazon uh, fairly cheap. I like the 4S ones. Uh, I've been flying these 1550s for a while, basically because they're the best deal. Not because they're the best battery, but they're the best deal. And then now they've got these 1600s, um, 120Cs. So they're a little bit more punchy than, than these 1550s, uh, but they're a good budget battery if that's what you're looking for. High performance, listen, I'm not a high performance flyer, so I couldn't really tell you what's the absolute best. You know, a lot of people like these uh, CNHLs, but some people don't. Um, but again, budget, that's where I'm at. Good bang for your buck, Avonix the way to go. They've got, you know, a handful of different sizes. We've got a 1300 here, 1550. Again, know your quad, know what you're flying, and uh, purchase your battery from that. Anyway, I hope this was helpful at least a little bit. If it was, give us a thumbs up. If you want to buy a battery, check the link in the description down below. I've got affiliate links for various different batteries. Um, if you're looking for something from one of your quads, and if it was helpful, you know, use those links. It supports the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. just helps us make a few bucks so we can keep making videos for you. Hey, good luck, everyone, and happy flying.